You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Never here for Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, a Dean's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> Without electrical power, the quality of healthcare plummeted, and water and sewage systems were crippled. Diseases we thought defeated centuries ago made their comeback in a most unsightly fashion. Many thought the end of the world had arrived, and in a way it had. Some people blamed whoever their belief system would allow, angry at the gods that had forsaken them. Others pointed their fingers at our lifestyle and society, not that anyone was listening. Practically, we were back in the Middle Ages. Governments collapsed and were overthrown, and the ensuing power vacuums filled with groups of people that were sometimes organized and sometimes not. The few functioning electronic devices left became rare, sought after artifacts over which battles and even wars were fought. Of course. Of course, there were also there were also wars over resources and territory. The weaponry used was improvised or reclaimed from the days when humans had been present on the battlefield. It had been in ages, but people returned to the old bloody ways of war. Humanity is in shambles now. Those that, that I'd, those that I'd call family and friends now live with me in a giant, mostly self-sufficient city-state of survivors. A huge wall around the perimeter, guarded by militia, prevents any outside interference. It's the only way you can re retain a modicum of order. Gangs of raiders and looters run rampant on the outside. They would hesitate to kill first and ask questions later if they had known about my PDA. Our contained community has flourished for years now. We have homes to live in, crops to grow, and livestock to raise and still have our own automated hospital that runs on salvage generators. Lately, those supplies have started to run low and dangerously so. The power we have is running out. Illnesses are spreading throughout the city, and treatment isn't avail as available as it used to be. Our population is dropping by the day. We took a great risk to increase the radius of our scouting missions, desperate to find something outside the wall that could help us. You already know the rest of the story. We found the portal, and you... And now you know why this whole thing is so important to me. All our hopes lie in acquiring the generators you promised us. The act of sending Reza and me here has, without a doubt, already cost the lives of some people back home. Beyond the city walls is a dead zone. We haven't heard from any other settlements for months now. The state of the rest of the world is unknown. When Reza and I were sent here, my peers made it clear that this was our last chance. If anything happens to us, no more people will be sent. We can't manage to bring back something that will help. We'll have sealed the fate of the tens of thousands that live in our city. I'm sorry, Keegan. I didn't know. If what you are telling me is true, it unfortunately does not work in your favor. As sad as your situation may be, it gives Reza a motive. Desperate times call for desperate measures, after all. In that vein, it also gives you a motive. Considering the gravity of the human plight, it gives you all the more reason to collaborate with him. I'm not... What Reza's doing is wrong. You can't send me away under these circumstances because I'm your best bet at finding him. Even so, you would still be in grave danger after we announce Reza's involvement in the murders. I cannot and will not take responsibility for the consequences when I know of the risks. What about our deal, then? In the wake of this new information, and as a sign of goodwill, we will send the generators you are owed to the portal once this is over, under two conditions. Humanity must condemn Reza's actions, and we must reclaim the stolen PDAs. I've changed my mind. You should let Keegan stay here. I cannot take your word under consideration in this matter, Chief. Taking into account Maverick's actions and your responsibility for them, you will have to be dealt with separately. With my authority as the minister in charge of the human visit, my decision is to have Keegan sent back to the human world through the portal. Please. Immediately. Chief, uh, please arrange for an escort to take Keegan to the portal now. I could do it myself, Minister. Well, we have our own matters to discuss, Chief, and I would rather get that over with as quickly as possible. In that case, one of my officers should be here any moment. I arranged for him to meet us here. How handy. Then let us wait for this officer of yours. It didn't take long for Sebastian to arrive. After the situation was explained, he was visibly shocked, but didn't protest when he was given the task of sending me back through the portal. Let's go, Keegan! Don't I even get to say goodbye? Let us not waste any more time. You will still be free to send letters after you have arrived on the other side. Just go, Keegan. Come on, then! 
We were silent as Sebastian and I slowly made our way to the portal. With each step I took, I drew closer and closer to the hopelessness awaiting for me in the ruins of the human world. All in all, I certainly had a unique experience alongside these dragons, and although this place was filled with just as much drama and murder as back home, I would remember this world and all the people I met. I would fondly think back to the days I spent in our comfortable standard of living, a shadow of how humanity used to be. Even without the generators, at the very least I'd be returning home with a few life lessons. What's going on here? Lost in thought, I hadn't even noticed Aideen approaching. I'm sort of your concern. Please leave. Can I even get a few minutes before I go? I suppose nobody's stopping us, but make it quick. Hey, Keegan, wh what's going on here? Something serious happened. Looks like I have to leave. Right now? Why? It was the minister's decision, not mine. You'll hear about it all soon enough. Does this have anything to do with what I've been hearing? Is Brezza really a murderer? I'm afraid so. Oh. Well, what does that make you? I don't have anything to do with that. I was helping the police find him. Then why are you leaving? They don't want me to stay here with all this going on. It's for my own safety. Well, it was nice to get to know you at least. Likewise. I guess I should get going. And goodbye, Keegan. Goodbye, Aideen. Oh, I remember her. That was a witness from Reza's first murder. Did you know her? I see. A few minutes later, we arrived at the portal, standing proud as ever in defiance of the elements. How many years had the structure survived before it was found? I hope I can remember how this thing works. Are you joking? Yeah, sorry, I got it. Alright, I suppose it's time for us to say goodbye. Ugh. Excuse me. Let's keep it professional. I don't like to mix personal matters with work. He looked away and I shrugged. Go ahead, turn it on then. Would you stand between the pillars, please? Of course. I take my, took my place and stared toward the horizon while I thought about what would happen now, in this world and in others. Even if I made a break for it, I'd become a fugitive, no better than Reza. It would be near impossible to investigate the case by myself while on the run in a world I knew so little about. At the very least, I took comfort in the fact that I did everything I could to help, even if it turned out like this. Nevertheless, I dreaded going back empty-handed and returning to my old life in our ruined city. Any second now the teleportation process would start, disintegrating my body before I would reappear on the other side. Back in my dying world. I wondered if there was any risk of getting lost somewhere between worlds. We didn't really even we didn't really know what, how the portals worked after all. Maybe I would be flung out somewhere else in space and time, or it might affect my body in some way. I hadn't noticed any unusual changes in my body since I arrived in the dragon's world, but I had no way of knowing if there were potential long-term side effects. I still remember how the images I saw when I teleported the first time, the vivid sights and patterns, people and situations I've recognized since then. It only took a few moments to arrive at the other side of the portal, yet it felt like I had dreamed a thousand dreams. And during the nights I spent here, these dreams had often reappeared. Any time now, I would undergo the same experience again. I was almost relieved that my adventure was over. Things had turned out far differently than expected. I evaded danger, got swept into a murder investigation, and met incredible intelligent beings from several different species. It had certainly been a time to remember. With that thought, I closed my eyes and braced myself for the moment that would come any second now. But that moment never came. The next thing that did happen was that I heard Sebastian's voice. It's not working. Are you joking again? No, really, it's not working. Wait, what is this? Hmm? It's broken. Can you fix it? I don't think so. This doesn't look like a simple act of vandalism. It looks like some parts were torn out. Hmm. I guess that means I guess that means I'm not leaving, huh? Not yet, at least. Well, what do we what do we do now? Let's head back. The chief has to know about this right away. We were back at the ministry before long. Emma and Bryce were still outside as Remy approached the two of them. Here are the case files, Emma. Why, thank you. Keegan and an officer. What is this about, Emma? That is what I would like to know. Please, officer, enlighten me. Why has my order not been carried out? The portal is broken. 
It's broken? Yeah, it looks like someone tampered with it and stole parts. I couldn't even get the interface to turn on. We'll check it out once I'm done here. I suppose Keegan will stay with us for the longer after all. Seeing how this is an emergency situation, I will make this short. Chief, as a result of your carelessness regarding Maverick and Reza, you are temporarily removed from any duties related to the humans. Given these dangerous times, you will instead serve as my personal escort until further notice. Considering the circumstances, you will be allowed to coordinate the investigation of the portal, but after that, you are to immediately return to me to start your new task. Understood? Understood. Then all of you are dismissed. She turned to leave, for me trailing after her. Alright, let's head to the portal. That includes you, Keegan. Of course. Out of the corner of my eye, I spotted a sheet of paper on the ground. Hey, what's this? Emma probably dropped one of the case files. Either her or her assistant. You better bring that to her. Sebastian and I should hurry to the portal. Meet us there afterwards, okay? Sure. I picked up the sheet and started reading. It was about it was about what had happened when I met Reza at the portal. Of course, I didn't say anything I didn't already know. As I walked up the stairs, I wondered if it was okay for an authorized person to enter the building. All I knew about the place was that Emera worked there. I did have an important document that was going to be missed, so I walked inside only to be greeted with it by an empty lobby. But luckily, there were some signs directing me to Emera's office. It didn't take long to find it. I heard voices when I approached the door. By the way, what happened to the scroll you brought me this morning? The last time I saw it did not have that tear. I, I dropped it. Tell me something new for once. Okay, someone else dropped it. Am I supposed to believe that? Remy, are you aware of how much this costs? Repairing and replacing artifacts is not cheap. I am afraid we will have to deduct this from your wage again. I see. You are not doing this on purpose, are you? Of course not. You have been working for me for a long time now. I expected you to learn at some point, but you are very resistant to do so. Not wanting to listen to this any longer, I decided to knock. There were a few seconds of silence. Please, come in. I only opened the door long enough to hand Remy the sheet of paper. I think he dropped this outside. After I closed the door and started to walk away, I heard the voices resume. This is from one of the case files you requested. You must have dropped it. One second, yeah. Okay. Then why was it left outside? As my assistant, you should have paid more attention. If this got into the wrong hands, someone could get into trouble. I made my way back to the portal and arrived shortly after Bryce and Sebastian. Well, I can confirm that it's not turning on. I told you that already. Just wanted to be sure. Would you really think it would still work with a chunk ripped out of it? Hey, I'm not an engineer. We don't know how the portal works. It was worth it. It was worth another try. There you are, Keegan. What do you make of this? I'm afraid I don't know any more than you do. I'm not an engineer either. In that case, we should start thinking about the who and when. There are patrols assigned to the portal and surrounding area day and night. If someone tampered with the portal, they must have been they must have seen something. Today's day patrol didn't notice anything unusual though. I guess you just missed the part about the portal being vandalized. It'd be easy to overlook. It's a small part of the machine, and it's not like she was expected to check every square inch of it with each lap around the area. What about the night patrol, then? When I went over the reports this morning, I noticed the night patrol hadn't handed theirs in yet. And who was patrolling last night? Let me think for a minute. The schedule always goes in a certain order, so last night would have been... Damn. What is it? The night patrol for last night would have been Maverick. I got wrapped up in all the recent chaos and forgot to find a replacement for him when he went on sick leave. Maybe Emma was right to take me off the case. So there was no night guard here at all? That's right. Whoever it was had an easy time doing whatever they wanted. Could it have been Maverick? If he knew no one was going to be here, he could have he could have used that knowledge to his advantage. He couldn't have known that I'd forget to find a replacement, though. I don't usually slip up like this. What about Reza? Why would he have done it? He'd be cutting off his only way out. No, he'd be doing something smart. If he has the part he needed to get the portal working again, then he's in control of who gets to use it. He's cutting off our ability to communicate with mankind. We wouldn't be able to inform them of Reza's actions. Maybe we shouldn't have kept the investigation secret for this long. If your theory is true, that would be proof that Reza's actions are his own, not humanity's. Hey, I already trust you on that. What's a stunt to grant humanity plausible deniability? 
No way. There are things that are too dire for the humans to take such an extraordinary risk, especially for that. I'm sure that wouldn't be the only reason they'd benefit, though. There must be something we're not aware of. Maybe we're looking at this from the wrong angle. If no one was here to guard the portal, anyone could have broken it. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything done to do with Reza or Maverick. But they still have the greatest motives. Sure, but they definitely aren't the only ones to have one. There could be private groups that are interested in the technology or significance as a human artifact. So that puts us exactly nowhere. At least as far as speculation is concerned, it's about time for forensics to show up anyway. Let's hope they can pull some clues from all this. Sebastian, can you take it from here? You've been just, you've been just as dedicated to the case as I have. Since I'll have to be at the Minister's side for a while, I'd like you to take charge of the investigation for now. Thanks, Chief. I won't let you down. What's up with that anyway? Being appointed as Ember's bodyguard as punishment just seems strange to me. Are you kidding? I could have lost my job. This is a way better outcome. Honestly, she probably did it for her own sake more than anything else, but I'm not complaining. If that's all, I'm going to head back to the Ministry. I should, shouldn't keep her waiting. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Trezum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye.